Are you struggling to manage a virtual team? Is being remote the problem? Or is it your management style that's causing you heartburn? In this video, I'm gonna share the three principles that I used when I was managing in person uh, and that I still use to manage uh, remote teams now. Stick around to the end to learn why all three are crucial if you do make the decision to go completely remote from now on. I think that management is something that's easily taught and almost anybody can do. And I think all you need is a couple of um, sort of very simple, especially in person, right? It's really easy to manage people when you can see what they're doing all the time, you can go to their desk and you can look over their shoulder. Um, it, it's really hard when you can't do those things. And so you have to have a system in place. And that's really what a manager's job is, is, is to build a system that allows their teams to do their best work without the manager breathing down their neck all the time. You know, that's one of the most common complaints for employees when the world was in person everywhere, is that they felt micromanaged or they didn't feel like they had any freedom at work. What I think a lot of managers are struggling with now is they can't micromanage a virtual team. Uh, because unless you wanna put a camera over somebody's shoulder in their home, uh, you're not gonna know what they're doing all day, every day. Uh, and so it's your job to build a system that gets you comfortable uh, with their uh, daily activities and the outputs that are required to move the business forward. Well, for me, uh, a, a management system is built on sort of three principles. Uh, and the three principles are trust, purpose, and communication. I think trust is hugely important, uh, especially when you're talking about virtual teams, because once again, you can't see what they're doing all the time. Um, you know, you're, you've hired people to do a certain job, uh, and you know, if you're a manager that says, I don't care how long you work as long as the work gets done, and you have to build your system around trusting that the work will get done. If it is important that you're extracting every single minute uh, that you've sort of made a contract for, um, then you have to make sure that they're actually putting in all of the work that they say that they're putting in. Um, I tend to lean towards the get the work done and I don't care how you do it. Uh, and if it takes you two hours when it would have taken me eight, great, go do something else with the other six hours. But it, it comes down to the, the kinds of people that you want to hire and the kinds of people that you want to hire comes from your, your core values. You have to have that foundation or you're never going to have real trust uh, for anybody that works for you, especially on a remote team, because you just can't see what, what they're doing all the time. All you really see is the results uh, and what they tell you that they're doing all the time. I know lots and lots of managers that want their team to be uh, very process driven, but they don't want to be very process driven themselves. And so I think a lot of the times it's uh, do what I say, not what I do uh, for most managers. So I think the, the most important part uh, is for a manager to have a personal system that they can trust uh, and then teach their team some version of that personal system. Uh, and if the team is using a system that you know, the manager already trusts, uh, the manager is more likely to, to trust that the work is getting done in the way that they want it to get done and that the, the output or the, the predicted result is going to be there in the end, right? Um, the other side of that too is I think it, it comes down to a whole lot of uh, relationship building from the manager's standpoint. Uh, it's really easy to look at most managers' calendars and go, where could I fit in another meeting uh, especially one that's sort of soft, like a one-on-one, -on -one, right? But honestly, they're the most important meetings that you have uh, each week. Uh, that's where you build relationships. That's where you learn about the people that work for you. That's where you can establish that trusting relationship that lets you feel comfortable giving them an assignment, giving them a deadline, uh, and you know, just sort of knowing that the work is going to get done in that time, whether you're seeing it get done all day or whether you're uh, just sort of observing it and checking in on it uh, as the work progresses virtually. And I think that's the other part of it too, is I think managers have to set built-in check-in points. You know, don't just say, hey, get this done in a week and we'll look at the final product. Build in some check-in points. Say, hey, show me a first draft. And, you know, I'd like to see a first draft in two days. Uh, after you look at the first draft, you know, set a deadline for the revisions. Like, plan your projects. Which... Once again, I think goes back to what's your personal system as a manager? Uh, because 
whatever your team system for getting the work done is, it probably needs to be some derivation of your own personal system. Well, I mean, I think that we are all getting really comfortable with Zoom and things like Google Meet, uh, you know, to, to check in on things. Anything where you can share a screen, uh, any of the tools that allow you to be collaborative. So uh, Google Docs is one that's great because you can both be in a document and making notes and edits at the same time. Uh, virtual whiteboard tools like Miro are, are great for sort of marking up things on a, on a big open canvas. But honestly, the, the tools don't matter. Uh, what matters is the relationship. You know, are, are you both open to giving feedback? Are you both open to receiving feedback? Do you trust each other enough to uh, be vulnerable about the way you feel about the work or the way you feel about um, how something is happening uh, inside the company? Uh, once again, and that only comes through, through building those relationships. Purpose is what tells them what to work on next, you know? It, it, as opposed to uh, me going and seeing you know, somebody twiddling their thumbs or they got their foot on their desk, which you, know, you can kind of do in person. Uh, and some of that's important, you know, think time, especially in an agency, happens. Um, but uh, virtually, you, you got no idea. So I think it's really important for a manager to set a clear purpose. And not only like the big vision, where are we going in five years, but what do we have to get done this week? Uh, who's responsible for what? Who's going to own the parts and pieces of a project? What are the real priorities? Uh, what, do you, what do you work on next if you get the first thing done uh, before you thought you would get it done? You, you know, that's why trust is sort of the foundation, but purpose uh, only works if you have trust because you're gonna say, hey, I need these five things done. Uh, these are the sort of priority order. Uh, I'm trusting you to get them done in a manner that will get the result that we want. There, there you have given them a purpose, you've, you've told them what they need to accomplish, and you have to, at that point, let go and trust that they're going to take care of it in a meaningful way. When you go remote, uh, it's a whole lot harder to have sort of ad hoc meetings. And in fact, I would tell you that one of the benefits of, of going fully remote or fully virtual is that you shut down a whole lot of those ad hoc meetings. So leveraging tools like Slack to provide sort of really quick communication or really quick collaboration uh, when necessary is hugely important. Having some sort of regular check-in cadence, whether that's something as simple as whenever you log on to do work, you hop in the team channel and say, hey everyone, I'm here for the day. Uh, or when you're you know, sort, of, sort of logging out for the day, you hop on and you say, hey everybody, uh, I'm, I'm checking out now. Uh, whether it's something small like that, just so people know when you're working, uh, or it's something more formal. Uh, you know, we run a, a daily huddle every morning. Um, we did that when we were in person and we've done it since we've been virtual. Uh, and it just sort of helps us, once again, uh, restate those priorities, uh, figure out if anything is moved or if anything has been added or if anything's you know, sort of changed. Uh, and, and once again, if we need to restate or reset our purpose uh, for that day, for that week, uh, I, I think that those kinds of meetings are really important. For everything else, uh, I sort of encourage everybody to be as asynchronous as possible. Look really carefully at what you need and ask yourself, is this a meeting level thing? Or is it really just something I could get feedback on in an email? You know, do I need a response right now? And if so, what is that immediate response mechanism? So the other person knows that I need a, an immediate response. Very few things require an immediate response. Uh, and very few things, even in a highly collaborative environment, really need uh, direct uh, time together on a call or a Zoom meeting, right? Uh, really, that's just a, a a replacement for uh, ad hoc meetings that are, are really mostly time wasters. Uh, and we're mostly time wasters when we were all in person too. So I, I think setting communication boundaries, uh, trying to find ways to become more asynchronous, hugely important, with a little bit of structure about when meetings happen, how they work, uh, and the ones that you do have, I would suggest you make them a little more formal than they were in person just so that they stay productive. 
Once again, I think this comes down to how disciplined are you as a manager? If, if you're the kind of manager that every five minutes on Slack says, hey, you got five minutes, uh, your whole team is gonna behave just like you. They're gonna ask each other if they have five minutes and they're gonna spend all of their day in ad hoc meetings with each other because that's a really easy way to spend your time and feel productive. Um, but if you're disciplined as a manager and you use the formal times that you've set aside for team communications, uh, for asking the questions that you need asked or getting the information that you need in order to uh, achieve what you need to achieve, your team will follow suit. They'll, they'll pick up on those cues, uh, especially if you reinforce, hey, we have set meeting times in order to communicate these things. Let's use those uh, productively and wisely uh, so that we have uh, more time for work when we're supposed to be working instead of just checking in with each other and, and seeing what the next thing that we need to be doing is. Because once again, when you're at a desk with each other, you sort of have that back and forth banter. And honestly, you just have to let some of that stuff go because it can get really lonely working from home. You know, it's nice to um, sort of have somebody to work next to. Uh, and I do know that a couple of people on our team have uh, Zoom work sessions where they, they, hop on the, they hop on a Zoom call together they don't even turn their microphones on, but they just they just work with the Zoom on so that they can see each other and, and it sort of feels like an in-person uh, working session. So as a manager, you, once again, you gotta pick where you're gonna be really tight-fisted and where you're gonna be a little bit looser, especially from a virtual perspective because your, your team has some needs that uh, you, you gotta sort of meet in a way that you didn't have to meet when you were uh, in person. The books uh, and the resources that I find most helpful for managing a remote team, there's actually a couple of them. Uh, but I think the two biggest thought leaders in this are the, the team at Todoist. They've been a fully remote team. They've got great articles about how they uh, communicate asynchronously, how they build their tools in order to uh, sort of serve uh, fully remote and virtual teams. Uh, and, and they're really open and, and their blog is great. And once again, all of their communication around that is fantastic. The, the other one that I really, really love is the guys over at Basecamp. Uh, and you know they've been uh, fully remote for years. Uh, there's a book called It Doesn't Have to Be Crazy at Work and they wrote a book called Remote Work, both of which are great. They lay out their system completely. Um, I would encourage anyone to go pick up any of their books around uh, how they run their businesses. Because I think, I think that there is a, a lot there that is right and a lot there that is the way the way a business should be run um, today versus the way a business was run 50 or 100 years ago. Uh, I also, you know, not to toot our own horn, but I also think that uh, sort of the, the Vista framework that we created to run our own businesses uh, is really helpful for this. It's got uh, a built-in meeting cadence. It's got a very good uh, agenda to the meetings. It certainly helps uh, managers set uh, both high level and sort of, you know, quarterly and weekly uh, purpose for their teams. And, you know, honestly, uh, if you can get the communication part right and the purpose part right, the trust pretty well takes care of itself. Um, as long as you're willing to let go uh, and let the process work, it, it will work for you. I'd love to know how you guys are dealing with the move to virtual uh, and the move to remote work. Uh, how are you managing things? What are some tips and some tricks uh, that you found to be super helpful? Share them in the comments. Uh, you know, and if you've got um, some more questions, feel free to reach out to us at iprovonline.com. We'd be more than happy to share uh, the things that we've learned uh, and some of the pitfalls that we've run into as we've made the move to virtual.